Crime Central on CBS. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. April 24th through April 30th marked the CDC's National Infant Immunization Week. But healthcare professionals are continuing to promote, promote infant, and child, infant and childhood vaccinations beyond that week. WIMT's Alyssa Williams spoke to healthcare experts about the importance of keeping your children up to date on their immunizations. They are something we often take for granted. When we look back in, in the history of public health and health care, immunizations have saved more lives than probably any health care uh, intervention that has occurred. But without them, our childhoods could have looked much different. So the fact that we have, you know, a, a bunch of, of illnesses that we do have vaccines for is great. From whooping cough to polio, healthcare providers and pediatricians like Dr. Travis Johnson at Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky are reminding parents to keep their kids up to date on their vaccinations. It is super important that you take your kids in for their, their yearly checkups or you know all their well child visits. Those are the visits that we monitor for vaccinations, make sure you're up to date. And then if you're behind, we get you caught up. If you're you know due for some, we can talk about it. Dr. Johnson says a few unvaccinated kids won't affect much, but once the number of unvaccinated children increases, so do other problems. You may have seen like the measles outbreaks um, like out in California and stuff like that. The reasons those happened is because they had decreased herd immunity. So the less kids who get vaccinated, the more likely these diseases are to recur, um, which obviously would be um, problematic for people. Scott Walker with the Kentucky River District Health Department says to avoid feeding into misinformation, talk to a reputable source. Talk to your pediatrician, talk to your family doctor, you know, talk to us here at the health department. We'll make sure that you have the most accurate information so you can make an informed decision for your child uh, and your family. Helping to keep you informed and your children healthy from whatever illness may come their way. In Hazard, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Public Health Director for the Kentucky River District State Health Department. Scott Locker says child immunizations declined during the pandemic due to a multitude of reasons. So if your child's not up to date on their vaccinations, it's important to reach out to your primary care provider to get that taken care of. Folks in Bell County near the Frakes and Chinoa communities were without power for most for part of the morning. The culprit appears to be a fallen tree from some heavy storms that came through the region region just after six this morning. The Frakes Volunteer Fire Department posted these photos to their Facebook page saying they were there were multiple power lines down and in the road. The fire department was able to remove the tree while the RECC and Spectrum were able to fix the down power lines. Crews in Floyd County responded to a fire at the Floyd County Schools transportation garage last night. Calls started coming in around 1030 PM about a fire at the garage and crews from the Martin City Fire Department swiftly responded with assistance from the Maytown Fire Department and left Beaver Fire Department. Officials say two buses were destroyed, two work trucks were damaged, and Floyd County Schools STEM bus was also damaged. Floyd County Schools Chief of Transportation Joe Marson says work will continue as normal, but may be a bit more difficult because of additional damage to the garage's structure. We'll probably be housed in a different location where duties will be performed as, as normal and uh, we'll be able to go on uh, temporarily until something permanent um, is worked out. Officials with the Floyd County Board of Education also announced that despite last night's fire, school will remain on regular schedule tomorrow, Monday, May 2nd. Firefighters from the East Bernstadt Fire and Rescue were busy Sunday. Some of the firefighters started off the day with aerial ladder training hosted by London City Fire Department. After responding to a commercial fire in London, Firefighters were then notified by London Laurel County 911 of a UTV on fire on a trail at Wildcat Off-Road Park. Firefighters were ex able to extinguish the fire. A Facebook post from the East Bernstadt Fire and Rescue said all firefighters cleared the scene, but no word was given on if there were any injuries. A single vehicle accident in West Virginia has left multiple people dead. Officials in Braxton County say the crash happened around 2.30 p.m. when two people were killed one adult and one child. 
after their vehicle went into the Elk River off of I-79. A volunteer firefighter attempting a rescue also drowned. Braxton County Sheriff John Hoffman says a deputy and state trooper were able to pull one of the victims from the water. They were also able to rescue another individual who's attempting to locate victims but had begun to go under. That individual is expected to be okay. No names have been released at this time and the crash is being investigated. After that busy morning like we Keaton was just talking about, we've actually ended up with a pretty nice second half of the day as we went through our Sunday evening downtown Whitesburg. It's all quiet as you'd expect five after 11 on a Sunday night. Low 60s at this moment. Now notice that dew point at 55. So those temperatures and those dew points not far off, meaning it does feel a little muggy outside. We're in the low to mid 60s around the region right now, which is also to be expected. For this time of night, you're just seeing some uh, ground clutter on the radar, some of the false returns, some of that low level moisture that's being picked up on the radar. All of our showers and what well, few thunderstorms we had left after this morning pushing on east, about to leave even West Virginia and head into the northern half of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Forecast for tonight, low 50s for us. Partly cloudy skies turning mostly clear overnight. We actually have a pretty nice start to the work week on the way. But then changes work yet. The details are coming up in just a few minutes. Keaton. Thanks, Evan. One Kentuckian is making the Commonwealth proud tonight. Noah Thompson, the American Idol star, has officially made the top seven of the competition singing show. It was Disney week in Hollywood, and Thompson sang, You've Got a Friend in Me from the animated movie Toy Story. The Louisa native usually belts country tunes, but has proven he can do it all in the past few weeks, singing songs by Harry Styles and last week, Stand By Me for Benny King. Good luck to Noah as he navigates his way through the top 10. The death of Naomi Judd continues to rock the country music industry, her fans and fellow Kentuckians. Tonight, Grayson Passmore spoke with Hank 105.5's Carl Shannon on his friendship and bond he shared with Judd. Diamond Rio. There's Winona. Vamp to you, Grant. It's a voice you recognize. Winona. Before you see his face. I met the Judds in the early 80s when they had their, after they had their first number one hit, Mama She's Crazy. With almost 50 like years in radio, practice. Carl Shannon has and made plenty of friends, just, from Waylon Jennings to Garth Brooks. But the bond he built with Naomi Judd was something different. Yeah, and dated it August 1993, but of how special our relationship was and she just kind of took me under her wing and she's only a few years older than me and uh, but it was just a real special thing that she uh, gave me this god's promises book it was backstage at this telethon a decade after the two first met shannon confiding in his friend that his mother was dying and so they came back in and there was this guardian angels nightlight and she, uh, she said, Ashley had one, Winona had one, one of her best friends had one, and she said, I want your mom to have the fourth. And then a few months mom. later, Judd would notice Shannon was off the air for a week. You know, she said, your mom passed away, didn't she? And I said, yeah, you know, and she said, well, I'm thinking about you, and blah, 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 and I, so I appreciate that, and I love you, so I love you too. And then she, uh, we went up to Louisville for Christmas, that's where I'm from, and she uh, she called the station, left me a message, said, you know, when you get back, she said, be sure to go by the station. I left you something. And she left me a Christmas present. There was a note that said, I know your mom couldn't get you anything this year, but I wanted to make sure you had something special. And it was a Seiko Mickey Mouse watch. Shannon says it's clear Judd was always a mom first. And, and what you see is what you got. You know, I don't think there's anything phony about Naomi Judd and a trailblazer in country music. There was a lot of like rockabilly type stuff and I think she just wanted to keep it real and keep it natural and keep it country. And why it will live on forever. In Lexington, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. The Judds were set to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame Sunday evening. Red carpet arrivals were canceled, but the ceremony did go on. The AP says Winona and Ashley Judd accepted the honor in tears. They held on to each other and recited a Bible verse together. 
Coming up at 11, Speaker Nancy Pelosi visits Ukraine with other Democratic leaders. We've got the latest on the war. In sunshine and warm temperatures are with us as we work through the beginning of the first work week of May. But changes, those are on the way too. Details coming up next. You want it? Click it. Reserve it and drive it. Buy it at Thornhill. 